Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. What do you get when you mix two white boys, both named Mike? A thing for Justin Timberlake and a piercing above your eye. Was he high? Their stories alone could make you cry. That's when you want to make your Irish goodbye. Alex, I promise you, the next time you pop into our box, I'm going to take your life. <laughs> it's, I, it's never, I've never been jarred more in my entire life than me and Feeney situating ourselves in our new windows and then Alex in. Fucking, yeah, smashes us in, like forcing me to sit bitch in a tight back seat of a Hyundai. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Irish Goodbye Podcast, a storytelling podcast. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Mike Feeney, being joined with me, as always, in 1080p HD, Michael Shane Cannon. <laughs> kind of. Uh, we are we're here, and uh, we're on Zoom uh, this week because Mike's traveling. Um, so uh, Can I, let's let's just get to the let's get to this right away, because I feel listen, there's part of me that feels uh, guilty and bad that we got that we do Zoom every once in a while. Right. I definitely would rather be in the in the studio. It's a much better energy. We bounce off each other. There's no ah, 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 lags or fucking blurry images. But Feeney is so visibly upset every time we're on Zoom. I hate it. We're just hate not it. in the same place. You, you don't do anything to make me feel better. I feel terrible and <laughs> protected my goddamn family, and you just couldn't care less. I need, I need to be with you. I need to physically be with you. That's the show. It's the feeding off each other's energy in person. I don't lot. believe There's you a... like me, though. <laughs> what do no, you mean? Look at the look at the episode look at the episodes that we're we're in the same room. It's uh it's a noticeable people are like, wow, what's that? And I'm like, that is that untapped, Friendship. you can't even explain it. You can't even explain it. And it's, then on Zoom, we're like, I feel like we're catching up and we're your pen pals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get you to circle back to Q1 and uh, regurgitate some of those <laughs> talking points from uh, earlier campaigns. Yeah, God, uh, Mike, uh, you have the floor. Long pause. You know, it's just like it's just it's hard to get energy while sitting in a you know staring at a screen of myself. You know, it shouldn't be that tough though because you got your brand new chair. Your butt must feel pretty comfy. Oh, you got your brand great. new desk. Oh. Uh, you set up your Valor entire pillar. Valor. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just uh, got yeah. legitimately <laughs> jealous and upset. I'm like, <laughs> the lower? Who do you think <laughs> you are? Dude, first of all, two people just walked in the house. I'm like, what the fuck is going on right now? And they're delivering the Peloton, baby. I'm gonna be You got a Peloton? Uh, I'm gonna be a smoking hot gay man in three weeks. Now this this is gonna be the end of our friendship. Is the, <laughs> if, if you if you become a Peloton boy, this is over. I don't know what, what do to mean? do. First of all, I've always been a Peloton boy deep down. I just never had the bike. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just such a, uh, you know, what's the, it's like, uh, you know, uh, any word you want to use elitist douchey uh, white yeah. women uh it's 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 a chelsea uh it's a chelsea expense it's wildly expensive not That's only right. for the bike but for the monthly programming well buddy guess where i'm living i haven't paid rent in six years so i'm flush with funds <laughs> yeah i'm peloton rich bit and i'm also not paying for it it's not huh. mine yeah, it's just coming into the home that I'm residing in, and I'm I'm going to be using it. I even bought shoes on eBay. Click in, oh baby. My, oh my god, <laughs> this is gonna! I can't wait to hear all the Peloton stories in the next few weeks, <laughs> guys. So, so I'm climbing up Kilimanjaro, and uh, you know, Eddie's giving me a lot of great advice, and he's really pushing me and motivating me through. And I just want to mm. be a savage and slay this Peloton. But then, you know, my knees are hurting, so I use some CBD. And then, <laughs> I'm gonna have painted nails too. It's gonna be exciting. Yeah. It's gonna be a whole new world. Oh, I'm just God assuming damn. that Alex is laughing at the top of her lungs when she can't show herself on on camera. Alex, are a... you here? Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> 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 Alex has to visually smash into the frame every time she wants it, to talk. It looks like you're in risky business and sliding on your socks yeah, across the yeah. hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, it's fantastic. Oh, then she's huh? gone as, as quick as she comes. Well, Mike, yeah. 
I, I got to say, we're recording early. This is a Tuesday from our last Thursday. So not only are we uh, stuck inside, but we're also giving ourselves a short week to live a life as it is. So we are going to be really doing some fun, fun stuff here. Well, I got I got a quick little guy that's fun that I'll tell you about. So I've been doing a lot of uh, video game streaming. I've been on uh, people that have followed that are interested in that twitch.tv slash NY Freshmaker. I've been uh, playing a lot of Call of Duty and stuff with Sagalo and Ian and Shuli, Evan Williams. Just a great gay old time that we have. Sagalo looks um, at that as as cardiovascular workouts, right? Like he, he <laughs> I feels assume. like him running through the battlefield is just as much of getting his heart <laughs> racing, doing physical activity. I, I, I don't you, you know, you'd have to ask him, but I, I would assume um, that the, it is he is doing a caloric counter on his watch or something. So, um, <laughs> well, and then he just texted me at the same time. Very weird. Mm. Um, dude, weird. I just okay. Best workout. My team won. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he's uh, so we've been playing a lot, and Ian Fidance has over the last couple weeks really honed like a like a coal into a diamond, really honed his online Twitch persona, which Evan Williams described perfectly. Basically, what it is is Ian talks about cum a lot and screams what? at the top of his lungs to where his audio is breaking up. And Evan Williams so brilliantly coined him Cum Kinnison because he just <laughs> he just screams and talks about cum. So he's calling him Cum Kinnison. So he is constantly I thought it was screaming. the door to your dick. It's the door to cum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. It's ex exactly that. So, um, so he's been doing it so much that it's uh, not only you know, an annoyance. Um, but it is it is actively people will actively leave my stream because he's just talking in depth about anal so much and people get grossed out and they're like, I didn't sign up for this. Um so we're the whole every time we I stream, signed just, up for FedEx stories. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Different branding. Gotta know. Know your market. And so Work. So Ian and I have been, we've, I've been, you know, our whole relationship online is like Ian says something horrifying. I have to like stop, correct him or stop him or put him in his place to where it's like, Ian, listen to where you are, you know? And now Shuli's made all these little audio drops so he could just at any point play Ian saying something like absolutely damning. Like at one point, he's got this dark voice where he just goes, I fucked her. And you're like, what is that about? Like he just can play things out of context. Really going to be bad for Ian's career. However, so. I've been yelling at Ian so much on Twitch recently because of how annoying that he's been that um, the other night Nemo was like um, was just crying for food. He was running around crying for food and I was distracted by something. I was with Erica. I was distracted by something. And I think it was like we were eating. And as Nemo is walking by, he cries again. And I just go, Ian. And I just yelled <laughs> at my cat. <laughs> and called him Ian and Erica's like what was that and I'm like I'm sorry it's just I'm so used to yelling at Ian that now I'm yelling at anybody I yell at I'm like it has to be Ian <laughs> thank anyone god anyone that annoys me <laughs> thank god it wasn't in the middle of like role playing sex or like some rough fuck that you and Erica were having and you're like god damn it Ian <laughs> and she's like I'm sorry what <laughs> You're like, no, Ian's just been doing ads for some cum sucker or something like that. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably what I was thinking about. <laughs> yeah, he was doing ads on his stream in my stream so that I had to, uh, you know, so that I had to fucking, I don't know, something popped up and it threw my whole thing. Was that, was that oh, VH1's <laughs> pop up video? What, what was that? Was some that? visual thing popped up, ruined my whole train of thought, and now I don't care to talk about it again. <laughs> Wait, Alex, I also didn't realize Story that you were over. dressed like you were leading an ayahuasca trip. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't know what that was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Alex, that was Woodstock. I don't know what that was, and I'm sorry, you guys. I'm getting I'm getting used to the new system. I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good that okay. we have like crystal clear video, and you look like you're pixelated porn. Yeah, you look like a Chinese food menu. <laughs> you look you like know? Chinese <laughs> genitals wearing porn. <laughs> Get out of here! Yeah. So, uh, hold, on. So hold on, that is fun. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna do that next time. <laughs> don't take my thing. I will. Um, so, so yeah, I, 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 that's that's the whole thing essentially. 
Dude, well, I mean, you know, you've heard it here for many weeks, and I'm I'm talking to the listeners that Feeney and I, you know, comedy is back. We've been discussing it uh, ad nauseum. It's just, it's here to stay. It's back at full capacity. Everybody's so excited. Um, and I did a show in, in Brooklyn the other night outside. You know, why not? Because it's February around Valentine's Day, just the coldest, brittlest month of the entire year. First of all, I have to drive into Brooklyn to get to this set, but I'm excited. Like I said, I don't leave the house really. So any drive or whatever is a pure vacation. I pop on a podcast. I realize that I have 4,000 hours to catch up on, and that's what's taking up the entire capacity of my phone. Like I haven't been able to film sets because I just have a backlog of podcasts on my phone, and I didn't figure that out until I took that road trip. So oh, I have no. all, yeah, I have all these podcasts. I'm, I'm, I'm a pig and shit. I'm having a good time. Totally forgot that, you know, everything is snowy in the city. I barely got to be, uh, you know, to be able to park the last time I came into the studio. This time I'm in I'm in Brooklyn. I find a parking spot and I like I go to back up. And you, you know, when your car, you think like you kind of just you have a four wheel. I have a four wheel drive car. So I figured I'd just kind of like roll over any small patch of snow with no you know, no real consequence whatsoever. I just kind of get over it real quick. So I get, I find a spot and I go to like turn reverse into the spot and I hit like an ice Island, a little plateau, but it's probably about 14 inches long tops. And my entire car just slides directly sideways into a full snowbank. Like well, <laughs> I, go to, I go to back it up and I'm easing in and it hits that little patch. And I'm like, no bullshit. This is a Subaru. And it like 180s and I fucking slam into a snowbank. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, like three people watched and were terrified. And then I kind of like angled to get the car back. I hit the car in front of me. I hit the car in back of me. And I finally like settle in onto an ice patch where like the middle of my car is lifted as if I'm getting like <laughs> Just my, <tilting. laughs> yeah, my, my tires are going to get changed or the oil, you know, yeah, so the fulcrum point. Dude, I saw a Jeep Wrangler <laughs> yesterday that was parked like this. It was like a snowbank that looked like a mountain and it looked uh -huh. like a Jeep commercial. It had the, the two front tires were not anywhere near the ground they were oh. they were perpendicular to the ground they were up maybe in the air was, maybe that was that was what bruce springsteen was driving during his dui <laughs> yeah which by the way wasn't a dui at all it turns out it what was happened? uh what a crazy story that was first off it's insane how uh social media and shit how things spread like wildfire because it's like they were right after that ad came out they were like the next day he got pulled over for a dui first off that happened in november the mm. DUI thing. Secondly, he had one shot of tequila and his blood alcohol content was 0 0.02. And the legal limit is 0 0.08. Right. So it was it was suspicion of DUI. And they were like, he, of course, you know, complied perfectly. And then it turns out he wasn't even drunk at all and was still legally allowed. But it didn't matter at that point. Everyone's like, they pulled the ad. They're like, fuck you. Fuck you. You drunk. You fucking ruin our lives. And now it's like he didn't do anything. <laughs> do you know what that is, though? That's the second commercial we've been had. That Jeep commercial came out on the Super Bowl. Everybody hated it. They made fun of it. It was so terrible. It's basically the Kendall Jenner fucking Pepsi commercial. It was just dog shit. It's like, come on, man, find the middle. Like, just a dog shit yeah. sentiment. Everything sucked about it. And then the second ad was the DUI. So that spiked new interest and new commentary on the commercial. They quote unquote pull it. I guarantee we see it back in rotation soon enough. But this has given them publicity, be it negative, positive, it doesn't matter. It's just in the ether that they couldn't even fucking pay for. So they probably orchestrated the release of that police document to coincide with the release of that commercial. Which is crazy because even if you just read it, even even if you read the, the police document at all, it's it's such a non-story. If anything, it's like Bruce Springsteen was pulled over. Turns out was fine. Like that's the story. <laughs> turns like, out can handle his booze. <laughs> but instead, it was like I read a thing that was like Bruce Springsteen arrested and charged with DWI, and I was like, oh weird, I didn't see like a mugshot or anything. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you always look for those. And he was like, nope. Because he wasn't drunk. <laughs> well, anyway, I was. you pull into Brooklyn. Um, yeah, no, I, I wasn't. But so I pull in, smash my car all over the place. I go to this. Uh, I go to the show. It's outside. It's like under an awning in front of a restaurant, in front of a cafe in Brooklyn, and it's it's. 
kind of nice. You know, it's it's nice to be around comics. Obviously, the only shows that I've been doing have been two person shows where I'm closing, and you know, I'm either Brendan's with me or somebody that I don't really know. So it's the socializing hasn't really been the same as we're used to. You know, we had such a we had such a potent social life before this. It's so different to like see where what it's become like my sister the other day was telling me uh she's like one of my favorite things about being able to like bounce around with you every once in a while was how cool the scene is and community and how many people you'd know and just the passing socializing and you know the conversation and all that shit and it made me really miss that and then going to this show i like didn't want to talk to anybody (laughs) It's like you're put right back in and I acted as though I've been socializing nonstop for the last four years. And I'm like, I just need a fucking break from these people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's you know, so hard it, when everyone's wearing a mask and stuff, too. It's almost like you have to keep saying what? And then it's just like, I ah, forget it. Well, weirdly enough, and I don't know if this is like across the board, but it was an outdoor show. So whatever the science is for that, I'll let everybody else debate it. I'm wearing a mask. I'm hanging out, you know, and but other people are like ripping cigs, getting super close to try to talk to you, you know, and I'm like some guy in a beard and a hat who like I'm saying like a lot it sucks. But do you know, you know, when you see somebody, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you see somebody and you're you figure you you've <laughs> met them before like their familiarity breeds uncertainty inside you of course cuz they're like oh mike right and, and and they're talking to you as if they're continuing a conversation that we just had mm-hmm. and, and so I, and i'm just like What's going on? You know, I, I had no idea who this dude was, but he looked familiar. And he kind of looked like Taylor Ketchum, to be perfectly honest, who I miss and who is no longer in comedy. But he he wasn't him. Uh, and he kept coming up to me. and was like, I'm sorry, I wrote down what he was talking about. So he was talking about how New York is like Puerto Rico. Like he just went off on this whole what I what what felt like a pre bit, like almost like a premise that he was trying out on me. And I but it was so out of nowhere and had no context to what we were experiencing or to the hello we had only said before that, that I was just like struggling to even understand what he was saying. And then he started recommending podcasts to me about guys on YouTube, some YouTube channel being the greatest YouTube channel of all time. And these two guys have conversations about like, you know, consciousness and all this stuff and, you know, trying to, you know, real deep cultural stuff. And he's like telling me all this stuff. And I was like, what like what the fuck is going on here like i i don't recognize your face i don't know who you are i'm not trying to be rude or anything but at the very least you could tell me your name because i know right. you must be experiencing this too at the very least it's been a year since i've seen you right. <laughs> you know it's not like it's not as though i ran into you recently so then he stood next to me for the rest of the show and watch socially dominated I, canon yet dude, again <laughs> and watched what i laughed at just watched oh. what i laughed at so i'm there in my mask and i just feel his eyes oh, on no. me the entire time and i'm just like get the fuck out of here dude like i'm feeling so uncomfortable that i'm currently being audited for what i find funny and it's just so i was like ah i gotta go to the store and i walked to a bodega i got like i got wipes for some reason i had like 600 canisters of wipes in the entire in my car but i'm like yeah i need another i bought wipes just to wipe down the microphone i bought like a cbd seltzer and a big giant water and i'm like oh this will be great for the ride home thinking i was gonna get on like second I ended up like closing the bitch out pretty, pretty much. So I was standing in the February cold for fucking two hours watching the show, but it was, it was a good show. Everybody was funny on it, but then I, so I'm on, I get on stage. I finally get on and I'm doing well immediately. And what a minute and a half into my set, a car accident happens right outside the (laughs) restaurant. (laughs) Dude, a fucking Chevy Malibu smashed into the back of a Jeep, again, driven by, you know, Bruce Springsteen. You got to hear it? Hear it, see it. I saw the people get out of their car and argue with each other. And I'm just making commentary of the whole thing. But this is what, this is like why, this is why we, 
we need comedy so much is I told you and Brendan, like I haven't done shows with other comics in a long time. There's been, there's not like, there's not a, a time or a place where I can kind of gauge where I'm at skill set wise or in the development of a bit next to other comics. I'm only kind of functioning against myself or against mm -hmm. a past version of myself where bits have been completed. So I don't really know where I'm at. And then I go to that show and I perform and I'm like, Oh, I'm 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 in great shape. <laughs> I'm doing I'm I'm doing I'm being really hard on myself. I feel pretty pretty accomplished for all the material that I've uh, you know functionally worked out over this basically barren year of comedy. And I kept the audience was killing through the car and just did had a great set. All that stuff walked off instantly. Put on my mask, and the kid in the beard walks up to me and he goes, "Now I know what you look like without the mask." Ah, oh, hate that. And hate just that. kept staring and I left. I just left immediately. I don't know if the show was paid, but I didn't you never got his around. name. I didn't get his name. He wasn't on the show. I don't even know if he was a comedian or an alive human being. He may have been a fucking specter for all I know that just was haunting me personally only. Yeah. Dude, it, 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 it was it was so surreal and the unblinking now I know what you look like under the mask made me realize that he didn't know who I was. That's just how he <laughs> talks to everybody. He immediately recommends podcasts to people and tells them like odd fucking comparisons of New York to San Fr to Puerto Rico. And it's just like, yeah, I mean, COVID takes the wrong people. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? Uh, what do you do with thing where you're, you're on stage and he just goes, and then the car crash happened. He's just your little, little devil child. <laughs> he caused the car accident. Do what you will with that, Mikey. Mm, the game well, has see, begun. Let, let's see what you got. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see how your how your comedy chops are. <laughs> oh, but dude, it was like the most bizarre experience of my life. I drive out of there. Oh, at one point too, some kid was like sitting on a mailbox outside of uh of of the show you know it, but there's it's residential it's brooklyn it's bushwick so there's people we see in their bay windows some guy opens his window shouts at the kid sitting he's like you know that's not a chair you know he's like get off that whatever it's like dude you don't own it you're renting what do you right. have like you're just being a dick you're you're yeah, only yeah. you just haven't had enough human interaction so you're just seeing an open fight which hey i applaud you that's also how i operate but you know you're just yeah. seeing an open fight and trying to take it the guy got so pissed off though that he like kept returning and like lifting up the window just to see where that guy was and he was Status check. <laughs> dude he was pacing back and forth in his apartment ripping cigarettes just in a closed windowed apartment, just being like pissed and on a Zach Morris style fucking cordless phone that I assume he was calling the police because <laughs> you know, then we heard cop sirens like as I was getting off stage and I was like, I, I don't I made the point. I was like, it used to be where we were so particular about rooms and if there was table talk or anything like that, we'd fucking melt down because people did not know how to sufficiently consume comedy. Now there's a car accident and a police siren and, you know, somebody's like slipping out of their chair or whatever, and I, you know, getting pneumonia. And I'm like, pretty good room. Yeah. <laughs> like, pretty yeah. pretty honestly, good street. De yeah. Decent show. <laughs> <laughs> pretty fun sidewalk. I gotta say, I, you know, it's a, yeah, it was first ever car accident that has happened in the middle of my my set. That though. is crazy, dude. I um I can't even. I and that's a weird thing too. It's like all of these shows. There's that fine line of like, where is it? Um, what's the balance between you know a desire to improve your skill set and chase your passion and you know just mental unwellness and dignity, uh, you know, stripping away of just being yeah. like, yeah, I guess I'm going to go try and do this because, <laughs> you know, what but else? That's the thing is it actually was a great show. It was on, was it on Valentine's Day? I think it was on Valentine's Day. That's hilarious that that's how I celebrated. <laughs> Nicole Nicole worked all day, made like contactless deliveries of all these bouquets, like worked tireless, uh, tirelessly for the week, you know, before probably waited for like, you know, to come home to a bubble bath and like lit candles. And I was like, see you toots, I got to go to Bushwick to perform in front of a car crash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone <laughs> needs to entertain the drivers before the police come. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to give an ice pack to the fucking person with whiplash. Talk about a colder room, you know? <laughs> Not very many. 
<laughs> car accident victims. All right, everybody. So what are we working with here? Where are you driving in from? Dude, these yeah. outdoor shows, too, are the only ones that you like. You know, I was going Lululemons for basically the full year, and I made I made kind of a loud declaration that I was no longer going to be wearing stiff pants, you know, jeans or whatever. But these, I mean, you have to in this weather. I wore jeans, and, like, my fucking belly button dick was just grinding against the teeth of my zipper the entire show. You were wearing awful. boxers? No, I was, but, you Your know, breeze? they're... they're yeah, my dick boxer cuts briefs? right through the boxers, boxer briefs. I have never worn loose boxers since, I don't know, I was nine when like, you know, I thought they were cool because I played basketball in loose boxers and my ass would get so sweaty that the boxer would lodge itself up my ass crack and it would just be the most noticeable, tough to pick wedgie of all time. <laughs> Alex? <laughs> I've never worn boxers. <laughs> just, All right. Now get out, get out, of out of here. Oh, come on. You, you have bitch. to time it better. <laughs> Hold on. I'll come back. Try it again. Now get out of here. Get out of here. Uh, oh. God, that was good. Uh, that was not as really good as all good. our five star reviews, if you could believe yeah. it. There's so many. I got to say, Feeney, we're probably 10 minutes early on the reviews because <laughs> this has been running for hours. <laughs> well, who knows? No way to find yeah. out. So everybody, Alex, is, there uh, a, is there a contractually agreed upon duration for all of these podcast episodes? Because Feeney and I are thin. I got something for the back half. Oh, oh, oh great. Yeah, yeah. That was car accident comedy was all I got. <laughs> <laughs> um, guys, well, if, if that doesn't make you keep listening, uh, check out all of our other episodes. If uh, we have over 200 episodes Tell a friend about the show. If you want to support us, uh, leave a five-star review on iTunes. Uh, yeah, just share share some of the recent episodes with pals. Uh, we also have over 200 episodes that you can check out at GasDigitalNetwork.com. Use the promo code IGP, two-week free trial. Get access to all of that, all the bonus content, all the other shows on the network, all their episodes, all their bonus content. You also get a discount to PodcastMerch.com, which all of you can Woo-hoo. still go to, even if you're not signed up. PodcastMerch.com. We got hoodies. We got t-shirts. They're available for you right now. We got colors and styles and fun and um there's yeah. something for everybody's and we they're comfortable the be- we should have made the beanie a winter long thing not just holidays the it's beanie's true. cool and a lot of people missed out i feel like i told a bunch of people they're like you have beanies oh fuck i'll order and i'm like yeah there were yeah. 11 days <laughs> yeah, <they're laughs> God. Were- sorry we, f- we forgot to promote it the two weeks they were available um so <laughs> guys you can uh send oh the whole format changed of this now yeah, now we're smaller. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is unlistenable, guys. Uh, follow I us can't. on social media. Irish goodbye. Why does Mike like being in the studio so much better? Uh, Irish goodbye. <laughs> Listen, podcast. I am right there with you. What hurts my feelings is your showing like you're really hurt by it and i'm not I doing am. it i know you are i am too i'm hurting with you i wish we had a conversation and we could get through the hurt together but instead you're <laughs> acting hurt and i'm in i'm no. internalizing the hurt you and know. it's become a big rift in our relationship that you don't even know about excuse me you know how this friendship works only discuss emotions on air all right and then that's it and we right. just talked and about on it top of that on top of that you think you're only telling ian he's crazy for the terrible things he's saying but i'm saying terrible things and and trying to be funny and you're fact checking them and telling me i'm a bad guy and i'm like i'm trying to be funny (laughs) at least there's no soundboard of you yet (laughs) there will be (laughs) um so guys uh check out irish goodbye across all social media send us an email if you got a crazy story irish goodbye podcast at gmail.com who knows maybe we'll read it when we got nothing All right, this so we're on a episode. short week. Yeah, yeah, too late. But check it out. Um, you guys can also check out our other podcast. Here's the scenario that's available now everywhere you get your podcast. But we also have a Patreon, patreon.com slash scenario pod. It's me, Mike, Brendan, and we, uh, Brendan Sagalow, we answer hypotheticals, what ifs, all that kind of stuff. Um, very silly, just, uh, just fun, shooting the shit. Um, no stories, no fucking current events, just straight up hypotheticals. So um, check that out. What was that? Escapist. Escapist Escapist fun, you know? Also, uh, (laughs) that is so jarring every time our faces slam closer to us. I'm not framed for full frame, Alex. And... um, (laughs) What else do we got? Oh, you guys um, you guys can definitely, like I said, go check out Here's a Scenario, uh, Irish Goodbye, and check out all of our other shit, too. I mean, uh, YouTube.com slash Mike Feeney Comedy slash Mike Cannon Comedy slash Irish Goodbye. You know, just subscribe to that. Pass those videos around. Like them. 
comment them, share them with some pals. Instagram at yeah. I am Mike Feeney at I am Mike Cannon. Um, I do have the uh, that date at Uncle Vinny's that's coming up in a couple of weeks on March 11th. So if anybody is in uh, Point Pleasant, come out to that. And then nice. uh, other stuff at MikeFeeneyComedy.com. Guys, you know Mike? what? If you're in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, treat yourself to a double feature because February 26th and 27th, your boy Mikey Shane Cannon is performing at his favorite road club, Uncle Woo! Vinny's Comedy Club, baby. Point Pleasant, New Jersey, headlining two nights, two shows. And then March 11th through the 13th, I'm taking my talents down near within a few hours of South Beach. I'll be in Tampa, Florida at Side Splitters. Very excited. I think it's five shows total. Uh, no reduced capacity because it's fucking utopia, baby. We're going back to 2019 by traveling to the middle of the shaft. And we're, uh, <laughs> we're going to have a good goddamn time. I'm really excited. And then um, what do I got? Philly Helium, March 24th. It's three days before my birthday. Looking very, very forward to that. I'm also, I'm maybe we'll play golf on my birthday. Do you want to play golf? Sure. I would love to play golf. But in, is it going to be Uninvited. freezing? Yeah, probably. But I mean, it might be warm. Usually my birthday is very warm. The, uh, the, the problem here is will it be open? Because it, then, you know, hopefully winter will have been op over for a few weeks. That's my hope. And uh, the ground will be sturdy enough and taken care of enough to, you know, to house some golfers. But that, uh, that might be a problem. I was also considering playing down in Tampa. What do you think? That you should definitely do for sure. Yeah. So if yeah, we you have should any be like fans, you should be like Voss now, you can just start bringing your clubs on the road with you. That'd be great. I mean, I'll probably rent clubs down there just because they're. Uh, I would rather do that than fucking check a bag. To be perfectly honest, but if we have any fans or listeners down in Tampa that want to play golf, that know of a good course, that just want a daytime friend, hit me up, baby. Let's let's get together. Yeah, 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 and uh, you know, have a good goddamn time on those links. So Alex, hey, Alex, what do you have to promote? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at I am Alex Scar and check out uh, my podcast Broad Topics T O P I X with the hilarious Kim Congdon. It's here on GasDigitalNetwork.com slash live every Thursday at nine thirty p.m. Or you could catch it for free on iTunes and YouTube every Monday. Great, nice. Um, and uh... <laughs> Alex, let me, can I can I ask a question though, Alex? Have you been screaming at your youth basketball team all day? Because no way. <laughs> Your voice is scratchy and kind of sexy, but also a little, you know, <sighs> a little Miley. No, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. You're just a tie tie baby girl. Yeah. Why would happen? One of the 48 podcasts that you're working on had uh, some late night work. Just, yeah. No, sometimes on Tuesdays now I'm here early in the morning. It's a whole thing. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's tough Alex to get is there. Like, I'm, working, I'm working on a lot of podcasts. I need to talk to them about alleviating my stress load. And then we asked, how did that conversation go? She goes, great. I'm producing four more podcasts actually <laughs> now. So uh, great. great. I'm on Bye Guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, check out Bye Guys on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Oh, oh. <laughs> plug in. Oh, Ian. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, plug in. Ian. Enough dudes are doing that already. <laughs> hey, now. Um, <laughs> is G Mike there? Does he have anything to say? Uh, I also think you should. Oh, where are you coming from? <laughs> that was terrifying. I also think you should listen to broad topics. It's great. All right, now you get. It. How do I smash you? Get out! <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> your fucking Captain Hook mustache out of here, dude. dude. <laughs> Why are the corners curled up like you're a fucking picture in a barber shop? Pista door, dude. Every time that I, every time that someone comes in uh, to this chat i feel like someone's pulling the shower curtain back on me while i'm in it yes. that's what it feels yeah. like i'm like oh. <laughs> it's so invasive all right <laughs> so i'll talk about my valentine's day i actually eric and i get to celebrate um because i knew i was going to do a valentine's day i had shows so i was like okay so you know maybe we'll do something you know we don't really like celebrate valentine you know it's kind of a fucking bullshit thing anyway so but what we like yeah. to do is every just, day we'll is valentine's it. day well, no, because that'd be expensive. But I think that it's just you know it's a day of uh, it's a day to observe you know or appreciate the relationship, right? So what we did on Saturday was we we went into the city, we got uh, we went to Italy, and we went around Italy. We bought some fucking fresh pasta that was just made. We bought some fresh uh, focaccia bread and some uh, other fresh ingredients and stuff like that. We go, we get a nice little like coffee and espressos as we're walking around and stuff. We get out of there. We drive back home. Erica makes homemade 
bolognese, like slow fucking four hour long type of recipe shit. And uh, we cook that all up. We eat that. We have the wine with it. It's just like one of those like, ah, you know, when you could just the difference in fresh pasta versus just like, you know, the boxed one that's like, you know, just been sitting there for God knows how many decades when you buy it. Yeah. I mean, I've had the only time I think I've had fresh pasta in my entire life is when Matteo cooked it for me shirtless. (laughs) <laughs> it was it's awesome. driving, what's that story uh that story is just i was at to stefano's apartment and matteo was there and he was like do you guys just want me to whip you something up and then he made a five-star italian restaurant <laughs> meal of like six different pastas with different sauces and like why was, was he a, shirtless you know, because we asked him to be Ah, uh, <laughs> like, I mean, from me and from Chris to me to Nicole to I think Chris's daughter, we all were like, pop that top off, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Don Pepe. Uh, I don't know what I'm so so we have all of this food, right? And we're like, oh, we also bought like fresh cheese and all this other stuff. And just like, you know, so I'm just just really going all out. Very, very, very full after that meal, to say the least. Right. Um, so yeah. the next day I have two shows at um one of New York Comedy Club's locations, which is at this bar in Midtown, and it's like a rooftop, but it's not a rooftop. Like it, it yeah. was a rooftop, but it's essentially fully enclosed. Yeah. But it's I don't oh, it's I don't a, know how to describe it's it. It's the it's the New York thing now, which is not you know you can't really blame the businesses for doing Loophole. what they got to do to survive. But it's basically they've created indoors outdoors, so for some reason that structure is okay. You know, it makes yeah, no sense yeah, whatsoever. Yeah. It's a tent <laughs> kind of attached to their perma structure. So it's an outside bar that usually is a rooftop, most, you know, half of which is inside. And then you got the open air part. They have permanently or at least, you know, semi permanently attached a tent to it to make it fully enclosed and habitable in the in the winter. But it's basically like we're trying to trick coronavirus into thinking it's outside. Yeah, 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 a hundred percent. So, so we have that. So I got two shows there. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to, you know, I, I have that thing where I go, I think the shows were at six 30 and, and eight 30 or something like that, which is prime. Like I'm fucked for dinner time, you know, because yeah. you go six 30. I, maybe I'll get some in between shows, but what the hell is there? It's a theater district. So there's just nothing around there to eat. So I was like, you know what? Like 10 minutes before I leave, I was like, you know what? I'll just bring some of the fucking the f- leftover food from, from Saturday. So within, you know, while I'm getting ready and starting to prep shows, Erica like does the reheating pasta, like a classic Italian on like the skillet. You know what I mean? And she's like flipping it and shit like that. And <laughs> I'm put, I'm cutting up little pieces of like the cheese and I'm putting it in its own container and then crackers from Italy in another container. And she's, she's, <laughs> she gives you a catering bin with sternos lit on fire. Yeah. I'm telling you, dude. like, so we, <laughs> we packed this whole bag that with like, uh, it's like a three course meal that I packed this whole bag with. So I was like, this is great. I could just, bring my food in because also the last time i was there the bar charged me like almost ten dollars for a guinness like you know they were charging the performers there wasn't even any sort of discount so i just bought a like coffee cup with red wine in it yeah. so i was like this is fucking great so i come there i do the i do the first show both shows are sold out i do the first show and to be honest that venue i had yet to have fun there and any of the times i've done shows there it just oh, feel really? it felt weird it just yeah i don't know i wasn't a huge fan of the room but that first show was so great. They were so fun and uh, they were just like ready for it and excited yeah. and, and laughed. And I closed out that show and I was like, oh, this, this throw was like really left. Be- I, I had Maybe it was just because I had such low expectations. I was like, this was fucking awesome. So then equally as exciting, I go, I, I take out my whole course meal. I like spread it out across the table. There's like other, other comics are like looking over like, you know, hungry dogs being like, what do you got there? Can I have a chip? You know, and I'm, uh, I'm eating like bolognese in this Irish restaurant by the way you know what i mean i'm like i'm eating in the face of your forefathers i'm eating i'm eating bolognese cheese and crackers i got fucking focaccia bread warmed up with tomato and olive oil and rosemary and i'm fucking and i'm drinking red wine with it i was like i was like a king i felt like you know what i felt like i felt like that the the italian dude from um 
Have you ever seen Enemy of the State with Will Smith and Gene yeah, Hackman? And there's that scene where he's he's sitting there. He's like, no, no, keep eating, keep eating. He's having like a serious meeting while he's his family is eating there. And then it turns into this giant bloodbath of a gunfight. But he's just like eating all the food while conducting business. That's what I'm doing. I'm like talking to people about comedy. People are like, thanks for coming. I'm like, no, you. I'm like, you know, this is boy. <laughs> and um, it's like know, that so Tony I, Soprano I, picture that Dino from Uncle Vinny's has in his office where he's like, I know myself so well. I sit with myself. And it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense. I assume it's some sort of Italian tough talk to nobody, but what the fuck? Yeah, is yeah. That? Chalk that up to nonsense. And so I. So I. Which eat is all the official of motto of the Italian culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I am. Now I eat all of it. And what I forget is that little friendly reminder of what happened to me yesterday was that I was incredibly full and in no mood to do a second show. But alas, there I was closing out the second show. So now I'm just food coma, baby, just fucking laying. Oh, also, the room where the show was was very it was toasty. It was like, you know, 70 degrees. It was nice. And, you know, the, yeah, yeah. the place where the comics were sitting, they had a thermostat on the wall. It was 50 degrees. Cool. So it was just like full coat, freezing. I didn't bring gloves because I'm like, I'm indoors, you know? And it's like, <laughs> boy, was that no, a regret. <laughs> yeah. So I am. So I'm just sitting there freezing while like, you know, eating the thing and I'm full. And then I go up on the second show and they were, you know, not as great as the first show. They were fine, but more just kind of like they were polite observers of comedy, not yeah, yeah. laughing engagers kind of a thing. So I do the second show and I'm like, that was fun. I leave. And I'm going back to my car. And it, it, there is something so weird now about New York City where there's so many less people on the streets that it does feel like it's ripe with opportunity to be, you know, have like more interactions with crazy people or like muggings. Like it feels a little more dangerous if it's just, it, it sounds almost, you know, uh, counterintuitive. But if like if there's 100 people walking on the street, I feel way safer than if there's just me and one other guy. 100%. Well, that's what makes yeah. me I tweeted this, but it makes me excited about the new stupid governor de, or de Blasio fucking we're going to have pop up performers and idiot dancers sashaying up and down Broadway. It's like, I can't wait until somebody that hasn't been able to afford their meds for the last 12 months stabs yeah. one of these Broadway dancers right in the in the thigh. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be, be awesome. it's not going to be good. So I, I, I'm, all I have to do is walk one block to my car, because even though it's impossible to park there, you know, can't be taught. So I found one. And uh, I, I'm walking back to the car and there's an there's an overhang of this one block strip. And I see a dude like already walking towards me. And I'm on my phone, but I'm doing this thing of like, doing an ocular assessment while I'm looking up from my phone at him, you know, yeah. <laughs> and from like 10 feet away, he starts doing his pitch to me. He starts fucking he's holding up like a he's holding up what I thought initially was a CD. Mm -hmm. And I think he's going to be like, uh, I'm, let me show you my hip hop track kind of yeah. a thing instead. Right. But instead, he opens it up with oh, yo, my mi br briefly. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I saw that you just jogged my memory <laughs> like my first couple days in new york city right outside the virgin megastore remember when that was a thing the virgin uh -huh. fucking megastore in times square i watched a guy get like a fucking farm fresh whatever kid from kansas or whatever but he was this giant like farm hand dude and he was talking he'd like hip-hop he's like yeah yeah whatever and he's like walking with him doing the whole pressure thing he like what's your name he tells him he like signs his name on the disc or whatever and he was like oh all right here you got here and he gives him the disc and he's like all right cool i'll listen and the guy's like 10 bucks and he's like yeah i'm not paying for this and the guy goes i just signed your name you have to and the guy goes oh yeah and threw it into the middle of broadway <laughs> and i was like that dude is my fucking hero i've oh never my seen god like that before and what did they life. do about it nothing they did nothing because the guy was huge and he was like oh yeah go fuck yourself it's a blank cd anyway you're just being a piece right. of shit like just right. beat it dude you right. got caught 100 so this dude was walking towards 10 feet away, starts his pitch, and I got to walk right towards him. So now I'm like, and I'm also midway through the block. So I can't even take, there's no, I have to go past him. There's no way to avoid this interaction. So, um, so his pitch starts with, yo, my man, do you like pussy? Oh, do you like sex? He, that's, then, and then he goes, do you like, <laughs> what, what, is he re what is he reading our blue chew ad? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hope we have one because boy, is this a perfect place for it. Yeah. Um, if we don't, so he goes, use the other two. 
he goes like he goes yo you like pussy you like hot sex and then i just i'm immediately like thanks man not not to, like i'm just to keep walking and now he's doing the thing where we've passed and now he's walking with me oh. and he's trying to hand me apparently a dvd not a cd and he goes and he goes uh and i'm just going no th- thanks man and he's pushing this you know hot sex thing to me and i go um and then I, I block him out for a second, you know, whatever his pitches. But then I tune back in because he says to me, yo, my man, you look like Brad Pitt. And I was like, what was that? <laughs> All right, what are we selling? Let's, let's, what, yeah, what, what, what do you have to offer? Because Let's talk about like... it. And what exactly about Brad Pitt do you think I look like? Is it the striking looks? Is it the hair? What, 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 yeah, tell me more about that. Body fat. Yeah, yeah. So he goes, uh, Career so sudden, trajectory. He goes, you look like, he goes, you look like Brad Pitt. And I go, huh? And then he holds up the, the DVD and he goes, a dollar. And I go, oh, no, no, man. And then he goes, 50 cents. And I go, I was like, that's how quickly this guy was bartering to sell this sex DVD porn. <laughs> and he, was, he, he started at a dollar. Oh, that was his, no. his hope was yeah. to get one dollar for it. Not even enough, not even half the money to ride the subway once. And right. then he went immediately down to 50 cents. And then I just went, no. And I, and then he stopped walking, was going to move on to somebody else. And then as I'm walking away, he just goes, don't be afraid of that pussy now. <laughs> don't know I mean, who or what that means. Words to live by, if I've ever heard it. <laughs> if I've yeah. ever heard them. I, that, don't be afraid of that pussy now. New shirt going up on yeah. podcastmerch.com. <laughs> yeah, with a cat as the pussy. But also, it's like, <laughs> I don't even know. Just guys, I've never seen someone try to sell me a DVD of porn for a dollar. Yeah, well, best case scenario is it was stolen, right? Worst case scenario is oh, it's this gotten was... a fair bit of use and he no longer needed it and could, you know, profit with a dollar. No, no. Worst case is it was child porn. Uh, oh. That's worst case. And it was written on. It was written on like a a like CD, <laughs> like a DVR. Like it was, it was like a burned CD. It wasn't like the original in packaging. Right. No was, artwork. The, the label was filled out in crayon. So you're like, I don't know. Yeah. That's not a good omen. <laughs> if anything, that's all signs point to no on this one. Pal, right? <laughs> it's just the the cover is Ernie burying Bert's face in a pillow. <laughs> 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 He just needs to unload this now. <laughs> Please, somebody draw me and Feeney as Bert and Ernie. And you know what? I'll give Feeney the top position. He could be banging me in the butt, but uh, have him just bend me over with my face, just giving a thumbs up smile. New t-shirt. Please don't. <laughs> Please. Uh, <yeah>. <laughs> Jeremiah. <laughs> yeah. Brutal though, man. I just, I yeah, I couldn't. It was such a weird thing. and I, But it also a part of me was like, you know, you have that, you always have that moment when when there's someone is like doing the walk and sell with you and they won't leave you alone, where there's always that thing of fight or flight where you go, this might turn violent in a yeah. second. Like he might yeah. just be like, oh yeah, and just fucking start attacking me. And you yeah. don't know what to do. And I was I looked around, I was completely, completely alone. There wasn't anybody for blocks. Yeah, you don't know if you should strike first. Be like real yeah. things that have passed through my head during that thing, especially when it gets like ramped up with the come on, man. Like, come on, come on. Yeah. Like where it no longer is salesy. It's like this intimidation thing. It's, it's like, yeah, should I just push you into the street without like it le- letting it escalate to the proper moment when I push you into the street? Like, is that is that on me or is right. that, you know, is, is that like a loophole in the law that people know what people with discs do, <laughs> you know, like, is that, is people that with discs? <laughs> I mean, we're in a digital world, baby. And you're still carrying around a fucking disc. It's like, get out of here. You know, exactly. Yeah, also what porn's free. I mean, stream it yeah. like an adult. What are you doing? Yeah. Especially How do porn on, stars yeah. make a living anymore? Because uh, if- ads, <laughs> no patreon and only fans i assume i mean i think oh, i think yeah, they now. probably make more money than they've ever made in their life and they During don't the have pandemic to, yeah they don't have to listen to some fucking you know silk shirted freak that pretends to be like a you know a video store guru that has connection yeah, to, yeah with a dvd <laughs> presser it's like oh actually i have a webcam at home i'm just gonna smash my roast beef against it <laughs> <laughs> i had, yeah, I had a I had a moment the other day 
in uh so trader joe's is right around here big fan of the dark chocolate peanut butter cups dude i am like i am really going wild with the sweets so this peloton bike arrived at the proper moment um but i don't know if you're a hypocrite like me but do you ever like you know, when you're looking through the grocery store and somebody kind of like presses up on you and like is obviously waiting for their turn to get in there, but you're like not being slow, but kind browsing. of browsing, not not even browsing, selecting, selecting a thing that you know you're going to buy, but you're picking the best one with produce. That's how it is. You don't just pick the first diarrhea colored vegetation. You fucking go through and see which one looks the best. So I'm there and some ladies like, like almost like, she's at the start of a fast and the furious drag race, like with her thing pump faking and just like growling at the line, just being like, Jesus Christ, like what the fuck? And in my head, I'm like considering mule kicking her cart, like across Trader Joe's cruise right there. So I'm trying to like, you know, not lose my mind in front of my son, you know, but uh, I'm, I'm instantly furious, instantly mad. And I'm like, you know, then for the rest of the the shopping trip, I'm considering like I, I run through the, the imagination of all the different ways I can disembowel this person, right? Like kill her sure. and, you know, all that stuff, take her head off, everything, like just running through the gamut. And then later, like in the same shopping experience, probably five, 10 minutes later, I'm trying to get into the frozen foods and two women are doing the exact same thing. And it took everything in my power not to run my cart directly in between both of them because they were taking too long. So, ah, so you became that person? I became who I hate. I am who I hate. Anytime that I have a problem with anything anybody else is doing, it's because I do it. I've decided <laughs> I'm the worst person on earth. And the only thing that makes me madder than me is somebody else trying to be me. <laughs> like we're perusing leave yeah. us be yeah. I'm just like how about you fucking get the hell out of there Dad yeah. needs some new goddamn seaweed strips oh do you eat those no I don't but crew really loves them which makes me it think he's gonna so enjoy gross. eating they're box like, they're like salty and fucking they just taste like you're eating the ocean It ta yeah it tastes a little bit like the bottom of a sardine can but I do like sardines yeah I like sardines like in things, you know, or even like when I was in Europe and stuff, like when you go to like Portugal and stuff, they do a lot of sardine stuff, but like they'll be on, you know, like a toast point with like some yeah. other, like a cheese or something. It's like, then I'm, I'm totally in it, but if just like eating them oh, in yeah. oil, you're, out of the can. You're, yeah, you're a classy guy. I have two reasons why I like sardines. One is from my youth right after free Willy. I, ref I demanded that my mother buy sardines and I used to pretend to be a, uh, an orca and I would like jump into my own hand and kind of like slide it down my own dumb gullet. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of those things you could have kept inside <laughs> we, i can't we don't have a, I, I need to stretch yeah never mind never mind more embarrassing stuff Go ahead. <laughs> and then the other uh, i really like sardines because they're almost like the perfect food for you and i used to eat like fistfuls of them uh when i was doing like the bodybuilding you know slimming body bible by men workout so i mean i i lived on those shits they're so disgusting but i treat them like fuel and now i eat them every once in a while as a tasty snack and nicole is like legitimately disgusted by it really because even cause yeah. especially with italians like that's the only anybody who doesn't make um a caesar salad if, if they leave the anchovies out of it you're not making a caesar salad the right way right. you gotta like it, well, i'm not saying you gotta lay the strips though. anchovies what? are different anchovies are different than sardines anchovies are much like they're a little more prickly oh. in the inside and they're also wildly salty sardines they come in like olive oil or whatever they have kind of a muted taste to them they're a little yeah. fishy but not too bad sardines are like that's hardcore yeah anchovies are they're different than so i just wow i never even realized i think i just thought they were the same thing forever no I've I've honestly I've gone down on a girl before and it had an unmistakable taste of anchovies and I was like I felt like a raccoon. You just held her up. You just held her up and just <laughs> like a whale up. tried to get it. Do you mind? I'm doing it. I'm doing a free willy thing right now. <laughs> I mean, there's a drop. <laughs> Right that was not a drop. Out. That was Mike recreating it. Again. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Alex, yeah. what do you think your vagina tastes like? Sardines? Don't or, uh, do that. Oh. Just... 
I mean, I'd like to say fruit. I'd like to say a nice tasty fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Um, Tomato? No, probably like like a pear, like a tasty pear. That's you know what's interesting answer. about pears is you. I almost <laughs> no, like – so crew loves <laughs> pears, and I used to like pears when I'm a kid, and then you just forget they exist. Mm -hmm, they're good, though. Pear are a pears are only a kid's fruit and nobody else. Here's what I think about pears, Alex. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I think pears are the least fun fruit to bite into because they always feels every you time feel I bite like into you're a pear, eating a middle aged housewife. <laughs> I think no. Every time I bite into a pear, I go, "Oh, did I just pick up a wax fruit by accident?" And it was like a staged fruit. Yeah. It doesn't snap in right. It feels like you're breaking it versus like an apple snap. How I do like pear if it's like you know if there's no skin, it's cut into something or blended in something. Then it's you know, the flavor of pear is really good. But the actual and also biting it, the outside of it, it's got that weird like hairiness almost to it or yeah. something. Like it's like rough. <laughs> that's that's definitely the only similarity it has with alex's vagina but um <laughs> I, will pear. I will say something mildly controversial pear uh -oh. the best throwing fruit i know what you're thinking because the circular what the apple the i would the, say macintosh apple because it's like a grenade so i guess it's not like a grenade no, no, a pear is kind of like a grenade, but the pear, you can, so the apple is fine or whatever, but it's so light that it kind of like, it can tail off. You can throw it almost like a, a fucking, uh, what is it, a slider, but a pear, you can throw it like a two seam fastball because you keep the skinny part between your top two fingies and you just fucking top over bottom hurl it. And dude, pears have enough density and weight to, you could like crush somebody's sternum with a pear. Well, I could see that. However, it is very bottom heavy. So you'd have to, it'd be like throwing a hammer. It would have to, it would like gain speed on certain spins like that. However, I'm going to raise you and say that the best throwing fruit is an orange because not only is it, um, is it, you know, baseball like in nature, but you could dig your nails into the skin and throw a fucking mean, you know, you really get the okay. grip on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah you throw a knuckleball, it just goes like this and <laughs> it just flutters and just fucking hits yeah. them in the tits. Um, I would agree. However, the orange, it's difficult to leave like the proper splash. So if you throw like a 90 mile per hour orange, then yeah, you can splatter it all over everything. But if you're fucking, you know, if you got a, a noodle for an arm and you're just hurling an orange, it just kind of like goes and then falls to the ground like you could still eat it but a pear a juicy pear that will fucking explode on contact dude that should be a that should be a um that should be a bonus thing is that we do, yeah. we do target practice with uh yeah. with a pear and a and an orange and a macintosh apple and let's throw like a peach in there cuz if peach won't be good cuz it's very soft and mushy but it will explode very well yeah, we could do honestly. We could go pineapple. We could li really run the gamut here and go from like fruit top to bottom. We did a nightmare. A, a pineapple would be a nightmare, but to watch it explode would be probably pretty fun. And then maybe after throwing, we figure out which is the best through a potato gun, and we we get Harrington to wear you know a blindfold, and we just try to fucking oh, th one right through his. Now the tongue. pineapple out of potato gun. Now you're talking because now yeah. you're now you're talking about a death weapon. <laughs> that thing is it's just like a, that's like a pipe bomb coming out you <laughs> it's just all it's all spikes baby that's when you want to make your Irish goodbye